Hey guys, this is Woodworker Rare. Um, back today with another video. Um, when you see this, I will have just posted a walkthrough of putting my tools in these bags. But right now, I want to show you what I have in the bags. Um, and so I will clear this off. You can actually see it. I'm picking up a cold, so if I sound weird, that's why. Well, it seems like every time I do one of these videos, I sound like I have a cold, so maybe maybe I sound normal. Um, okay, I will say two things. Um, compared to the bag that I originally started out with, which was this uh, Husky, these are all Husky, but compared to this, these stand up on their own. They're very stable, so I like that. Um, this one was basically, it, it wants to fall over, basically got a knife edge on the bottom, um, so there's nothing to stand up. Um, I, I replaced it not because of that, but just because of space, um, and organization purposes, and also, I don't know how much these weigh, I'd say at least 15 pounds, I don't want all that weight on one side, 10 of it's on one side anyway, so. Um, but anyway, I'll start with a small bag first, I think. Uh, we've got tape measure on the front. Perfect. Um, and I'm kind of thinking... This... No, it can't be. Yeah, it's gotta be. Okay, never mind. I was gonna say, I think, I'm thinking this one is gonna be on my right side, but it's not. Uh, okay, so, got the little alarm thing that they give us at work. Uh tape measure, Milwaukee Inksol pen, um, I've got a Pentex, Pentel, sorry, Intergel uh, pen, I removed the little rubber thing here because it was just too hard to put in and out of pouches, Paper Mate Sharp Writer pencil with added, I think Pentel, uh, high polymer eraser. Um, if you need erasers, these are the things to get, the, the high polymer ones. They're bright white, um, you can get them in this style, you can get them in a normal, like, big eraser. They work really, really well, and they last a long time. Um, don't get the pink things, those are junk. Um, I've never had one of those that worked well. I've had one that worked... It kind of did its job. Um... Most of them are cheap, and they just rub the stuff around, spread it, and make a mess. These actually pick up the, the graphite and remove it. Which is what the whole point of an eraser is. Um, this is an addition that I haven't actually carried with me um, in the job, but because it's on this pouch, I figured I'd, I'd try it. Um, and it is a pen, or pen, a tape... Uh, holder. Um, in this case, I've got electrical tape um, in different colors. Um, I don't think I'm going to keep this. I think I'm going to swap this out for maybe like a normal electrical, you know, black electrical tape and, you know, maybe a small roll of duct tape or something like that. Um, it is going to live in the pouch like this, though, so it's not, you know, clanking around and whatever. I don't really need that extra space anyway. Um, the next thing I have, I guess I'll do the Cobra pliers, Knipex. I want to get a smaller version of these, but uh, I'm not going to do that for a while. So, got the 10 inch ones, aka the 250 mil. Um, and in case you didn't know, uh, one inch is 25.4 millimeters. Um, you can thank the French for not having an easy conversion like it being 10 millimeters to an inch but that would make sense so <laughs> they didn't want to do that um they actually the reason they did that is because they hated um they hated their king at that point in history um and so they wanted everything that had to do with the monarchy to cease to exist so they changed everything they changed the calendar they changed the measurement system uh for temperature mass slash weight um, and what was the other thing? I forget. Volume. 
um, and length. Uh, millimeters are length, and so they chose something that is basically impossible to just calculate in your head. However, 250 millimeters is very, very close to, it's four millimeters short of 10 inches. So basically it's 10 inches. Um, so whenever you see European uh, numberings for tools, these first two numbers are just the model number. That is also part of the model number, but it tells you the size. Um, whenever you see that, you can just do that, you know, say, you know, basically 25 millimeters is an inch. So you can just figure out how many inches it is um, really quickly like that. Next, we have a Malco, uh, what is this, uh, uh, an awl, um, or a pick, whichever you want to call it. Um, I upgraded from an old screwdriver. I'm still using this. I think it's good. It's just that it's never pointy enough for what I need it to do, A. Um, it's never long enough for what I need it to do, B. And it's never flat enough for what I need it to do, C. Um, so it's completely useless at work. Um, while this one I think will do 90% of what I need to pick for, um, and at some point I can add a little pry bar um, to do the other stuff that I need to do. Well, 50%, and the pry bar will do the other. Um, I've got a gear wrench 81025 um, flex head quarter inch hex drive screwdriver so that means any hex bit fits in here and ratchets there we go um, it's got the little thumb knurling on the back really cool tool um, I don't use that very often, but I do use it enough that it makes sense to carry it. So, um, it gives me more torque than a screwdriver does, and it also allows me to access very, very small areas. And I actually use this the most, um, with the refrigerators we have at work. I work at a hotel in maintenance, which is why I have this. Um, and I can actually fit this beside you know your for your refrigerators here the wall to the cabinet that it's set in is there so I've only got a little bit of space I still have to move the refrigerator a little bit but there's no way I could get into that space with a screwdriver like there's absolutely no way I'd have to remove the whole refrigerator um which happily I don't have to do because I have this guy um I don't use the flex head part of that very often but it is there if I want it um, I'm actually going to give this a shot. I don't think I'm going to like it, but I'm going to give it a shot. Um, this is a Craftsman, uh, U.S. made, uh, what feels like an aluminum, um, handle. Yep, it is. Um, or not handle, but shaft. So, plastic handle, aluminum shaft, magnetized, um, somewhat decent magnet, um, but not not great um and also the fit in this is terrible and i don't know if that actually i do know that's just the way that they manufactured it because i have i don't think i've used this 10 times in the 10 or 12 years that i've owned it um which is another reason don't buy things that are made out of aluminum that take steel bits and inserts that's a terrible idea <laughs> Um, it's going to wear out that relatively quickly, especially if it's high torque. If you get a, like an aluminum bit driver for a drill or an impact driver, it's going to just like, why would you do that? Makes no sense. Um, yes, aluminum is what they use in the aerospace industry. No, the aerospace industry does not use steel inserts, steel bits in aluminum inserts. Um, on airplanes they may use that as a tool on an airplane but that is not what the airplane is made out of um, because it doesn't work well um, so that's I don't, I don't know what the plan was with this probably to make it less forward heavy um, 
but anyway that's my critique on this I don't think I'm gonna like it actually using it but I want to try it um, next I have a bit extension from Bosch um, it's actually made for spade bits so you put it in your drill put the the spade bit in here and it holds it really really nice um, okay so that's the end of this bag then the next bag is bigger as you can see um, I've got a hammer loop I'm never ever going to use that um, I have pockets over here that I'll occupy with something at some point maybe um, and as I do on the front of this I've got extra pockets um, don't know what I would use them for Frankly, they're not very well designed in my opinion. Um, so we'll see whether or not I ever use those. But starting off, multimeter and leads. Um, I don't have the alligator clip ones. I've just got the normal ones like that uh, with the caps. I leave the caps on because I want to have um, them not get lost. Um, and I don't want to get dust in them either. So. Um, that's why I do that. This is a Klein Tools MM300. It's a basic multimeter, but it does everything I need it to do. Um, I wish it had the little clip thing and like temperature and all that stuff, but I don't need that. Um, I never actually needed to use that. It's just more of a, you know, oh, I wonder, well, you know, what temperature it is in the room today. Um, serrated Gerber knife. Um is the easy out easy reach easy out or something I, don't, I forget what anyway uh, what is it? easy rescue um, is, is it easy out I forget anyway it doesn't matter it's a Gerber you can look it up fully serrated um, wire strippers uh, channel lock brand if you care uh, cheap flush cutters I don't recommend these. Don't buy Play-Doh. Buy uh, Heiko. Um, from all the reviews I've seen, they're literally $8 instead of... I paid 16 for these, but these are more like $4 pliers. Uh, so Or cutters. So I got ripped off. Um, but uh, anyway, get the Heiko ones. They're supposed to be way better. Um, my Weira, um, whatever this is, BC... 30 metal one um i don't know what else you'd make bits out of but apparently they're made out of metal um little short extension here we'll see if i ever use that but i've got all the bits i need um actually more than i need because it has a bunch of posi drive which i've never run into in years of working on stuff ratching uh bit holder um terrible terrible design don't buy this um, these bits get loose in here, they fall out, and then you open it up and they all fall on the floor. Um, which my coworker finds hilarious. Um, I actually kind of find it hilarious too, that DeWalt would make something this stupid. Um, it does, the one thing that this does that I like is it actually comes off, so you could actually just put a one inch bit in here and have a relatively short screwdriver. I've used that maybe twice, um, so it's not... That's the other thing that I find really annoying is trying to get this, these things in here is kind of a pain. Whatever. Um, also, it has an incredible amount of bit wobble, uh, both from the mechanism and the design that they chose. Phoenix PD36R flashlight. Got five levels of stupid bright. Um, I modified the clip so it just fit in here, slide in. Um, I don't have to think about it. Uh, let's see what else. I've got the SE Zancudo 2 knife, or Izula, sorry, Izula 2, uh, made by Rowan uh, for SE. Nice uh, 1095 steel. Uh, it does everything I needed to do, and it's super tough. And it's got a lifetime warranty I don't have to worry about. Lastly, channel lock uh, side cutters. These are really good. They rival my Knipex uh, cutters. Very, very good. Um, they're about half as much money, too. Well, no, I shouldn't say that. They're about, uh, they're $20, and the, the Knipex ones are like 30 So they're cheaper, um, but not cheap. Um, 
but they work really well. So at some point I'm going to upgrade these and I'm going to upgrade this, this uh, screwdriver soon. But um, I just want to show you that. And that is my kit. Um, I haven't carried these bags yet. Um, I actually just finished setting them up last night. Um, so I'm excited to do that. But that is my, my everyday carry for work. So I hope you guys liked it. Um, have a good day. And this is Woodworker Royer out.